Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. I'm out in our orchard today because I wanted to give you an update on how our apple trees are growing. Back around the 1st of June, I've shot a video that was about growing apples organically. That is something we have been doing for quite a number of years and we really wanted to avoid using chemicals. So that has involved a lot of research and experimentation and we know how to do it. So that was the purpose of the first video. But I wanted to show you how things are doing. I'll be sure to include a link to the first video in the description for this one on my YouTube channel. But you can also easily find it by going to my channel and just doing a search for the word apples. But the first video included really important information on things like thinning the fruit, early on so that the trees aren't overloaded and that the apples will grow to a nice size. I covered the organic sprays that we use and what the time frame is on that. Our use of indicator traps so we know when codling moths, which are our nemesis, are in the area. And the little nylon footies that we put onto our apples. Yes, that was the intense part, but it's so worth it. So you'll definitely want to watch the first video. Now I realize our fruit trees look like they have a horrible case of powdery mildew, but that isn't the situation at all. What you're seeing is a coating of kaolin clay mixed with water. This is an organic spray and it puts a film on the leaves that confuses the adult codling moths. And so oftentimes they won't even lay eggs because it doesn't feel right to them. But initially in the season, Bill was using a spray of BT, or Bacillus thuringiensis. That is also an organic spray. And he only needed to spray the trees until we had these nylon footies covering the apples. At that point, he has only needed to use this kaolin clay spray. And generally, he only needs to reapply it if we have a downpour. And we've had a few of those this summer, so it has been reapplied a few times. Now every so often you'll notice there are some apples that don't have footies on them and I wanted to explain why that is. We have a few apple trees and by the time we had put footies on about 400 apples we kind of ran out of enthusiasm and energy. So there are some with no footies and what we're doing is first of all Bill is spraying them with that kaolin clay mixture and also we're monitoring them to make sure there are no wormholes. And a lot of times they just do fine and we don't even lose an apple, so that's really cool. So here's where things stand now. All of the apples are growing really well, but we are being vigilant looking for any that have wormholes in them. If we find any, we take them off the tree and we get rid of them because we don't want that worm inside the apple to drop out of the apple and pupate over the winter in the soil. The fewer we have for next year, the better. With apple harvest season approaching, there are some cultural practices that are really important to follow in an orchard. First of all, support heavy branches. If you see any branches that are really hanging down from the weight of the fruit, put boards underneath the branches to give them some support. I do not want these branches breaking off at the trunk, which would be awful. So I've got these two supported with boards. And you know, this tree, I thinned it myself, and they are at the proper spacing, and yet those apples just weigh so much, it really was bending these branches down towards the ground. I didn't want that. The next thing is, really keep an eye on the fruit. If you see a wormhole, again, pull that apple off the tree. If you see one has fallen on the ground, get rid of them. Another thing is when you are harvesting your apples, make sure you pick the trees absolutely clean. Do not leave any apples on the tree because you never know. Those worms are sneaky and sometimes they are tricky to spot. So make sure you pick your trees clean. Here's an example of what a wormhole looks like, just in case you're curious. I am pulling that apple off and getting rid of it. So in our little orchard, which apples ripen first? 
Gravenstein, and Macintosh. And those Macintosh apples are huge. Next come the Jonagolds, and boy do they make a great pie and fabulous chunky applesauce. The last two varieties to ripen are Fuji and Honeycrisp. Both of these varieties make excellent eating apples, and Honeycrisp has to be one of my favorites. We are particularly excited because this is this tree's first year to produce apples. Now don't forget that pears are related to apples and because of this they can also get apple codling moth. So we use the same treatments as we do for our apples and yes most of them even got footies. How do you know if an apple is ripe? Well if you cut it in half and you see brown seeds that means it is ripe. If you see white seeds like in this Macintosh apple it's not ripe yet. You really can't judge ripeness by seeing that apples have fallen off the tree and onto the ground because sometimes during the season trees self-thin and so they will shed apples, mostly ones that have some kind of a problem with them. So the taste test and looking at the color of the seeds are really the most reliable. Well, that's the update on our apple trees. I hope you found it interesting and informative, but be sure to watch that first video because it's absolutely packed with information. I am so looking forward to apple harvest season. Happy gardening.